So, it's Thursday, the day which Bad Influence originally aired on. And what are we up to? We're on Season 2, this is episode number 4, which first aired on the 30th of September 1993. One, two... Monopoly. Over hotel, £2,000 please. Sure. Hello, on Bad Influence today, how four games like Monopoly are being given a digital dimension. Yes. The new version is out on the Switch now, isn't it? This week is Asterix on the SNES. One more. And as the Virtual Geographic League celebrates its 100th year birthday, I'll be following in the footsteps of Alexander Graham Bell and translocating to Solaris 7. Now, we are deep in the original... 90s VR period. I'm the world Scrabble champion. Hello, Hi. welcome to Bad Influence. Wow, hello, mate. We're going to set you a challenge now. This right. is the Amiga Scrabble program. Yeah. Do you feel confident? I feel pretty good. Yeah, I've actually. He's got some terrible right letters. There. And it's one game all at the moment, so this is the final one. I'm... Okay, off you go then, and we'll see how you get on at the end of the show. Thanks very much. Uh, Ertler, uh, yes. Ah, uh, <laughs> Namrud. Hello, Scrotty Furtlers, or should that be Scrotty Scrabblers? <laughs> Here's a few useful Scrabble... I noticed that Andy Weir is on Twitter. Irritate, ...which means to really irritate someone by rubbing... Because he liked a tweet of... Someone tweeted a... Someone's made a playlist of all my Bad Influence episodes and... ...every time you see... ...he favourited that tweet, which is always nice. BQAS, which is a cheat for Desert Strike on the Amiga. Sim Amiga 600. Nice. Screen, then play the game. Then, when you run out of ammo, just press F10 once, and you'll get all your weapons back, and you'll be impervious to all rocket, bullet, and missile. Attacks. I do like the Amiga 600. It's so compact and just looks nice, doesn't it? I also like Desert Strike. Zs and three Ws. Kazow. And it's the sound a keyboard makes when it smashes you in the face. Ow! It's true, you know. It's true. Have a look at this. Leave her hair alone, Andy. What are you doing? E32, the first 32 bit console to be launched in this country. Ah, yes. There's not very much of it around at the moment. There are only four games available, but more are promised by Christmas. 80, in fact. <laughs> now, when you buy the console, you yeah. get the usual bits and pieces. You get your mains adapter, etc. And you get this rather strange shaped controller. Why it's this shape, I've no idea. Oh, I really like the Amiga CD32 pad. Nuisance. You also it breaks easily, games, but I actually games, really like using it and the look of it. Which is, well, it takes ages to get going, and then it's really slow, and it's sort of like Lemmings, but it's, it's nowhere near as much eh, fun. Diggers is okay. Bit games are coming, they promise us. This is called Rise of the Robots. Oh, God. It's beat em up that makes full use of the machine's huge palette of over 16 million colours. And, like any CD system, it makes full use of CD quality sound. In the third uh, series of Bad Influence, they used an entire Rise of the Robots intro, didn't they? Because it was such a hyped game. For your money on CD than you do from a floppy or a cartridge. And that's because, of course, a CD can hold so much more information. Yes, it can, Andy. This, I'm sure you'll yes. as James, James Pond, Pond 2. Pond. But on the CD32, this game has an amazing 140 levels. <gasps> I only hope they've included level codes. My word. The comic book character Asterix is pretty popular. He sold over 20 million books, has starred in his own series of animated films, and has even got his own theme park. Really good games on the Master System, too. In his own SNES game. The year is 50 BC. Obelix has been captured by the invading Roman army, so Asterix, with a little help from the canine dogmatics, has to go and get him back. Never played the Super Nintendo release. Oh, it's Adam, yes. Game that all the companies have been coming out with for quite a while. Adam loves it. To it. All you're doing is picking up objects and smacking things, but there's a lot of levels. So he's he's tripping on a daily basis. He's so buzzing with these games. Here, lots of jumping around. If you look at the bottom of the screen, the dog might bites the soldier, stopping him from attacking me, which is useful. As you can see here, there's a lot of jumping. That portion there makes the temporary invincible so you can charge through the enemy and smack them up without having to take any damage. That's another useful point. Unfortunately, you just get bored by the game. There's just all this jumping around and there's nothing to do. Yep. I mean, you just That's a platformer. Here, between clouds, what's the point? To progress the level. On the boss back to avoid being damaged by the hedge. These coins here, when you have a hundred of them, will give you an extra life. A rip-off move of Mario, which the game is desperately trying to be. But <laughs> oh, Adam. Adam does not like this game. After an hour of play, continuous, this screen comes up telling you that you want to take a break. Personally, I don't know why anyone would want to play this game for an hour continuously. <laughs> There's too much jumping around, not enough to do. I wouldn't play this game unless I was getting paid for it. And seeing as this game costs... You probably are, to be fair. I'd take that well. £5 and buy some of the books. At least I get more fun out of them. 
I like the main characters. I don't think they did get paid, actually, really but graphics, they probably got some, I don't know, three cans of cola or something, bag of sweets. But once I did, it was quite good, and I like the setting in Roman times, too. And so the final scores for Asterix. The girls gave it an average score of three out of five, and the boys, well, some of them liked it more than Adam, so overall they gave it three out of five as well. Yeah, I do like the Asterix games. Especially on the Master System. Very nostalgic for me. Hear the news from America recently that virtual reality was in fact discovered over a hundred years ago. The what? mysterious Virtual Geographic League have just revealed the fact that they've been exploring cyberspace since the turn of the century. But now they need more funds for research. Sorry. So they've had to open their doors to the public. And among them was our own Z Wright. It's half past ten at night in London. It's just after lunch in Walnut Creek, California. And it's oh, later than I thought it was allowed at seven. I'm nice bandana, Z. Geographically, it was from this very same building that some of the bravest adventurers in history set out to explore. That kid in the chair looks happy. And I'm about to join them. All pilots for Alpha Four. Alpha Four, please report to the departure area. Attention, all pilots for Alpha Four. Oh, excuse me, that's my mission. <laughs> this looks like this always looked pretty cool to me. I've been translocated to the desert planet Solaris Seven. And I'm in a 30 foot tall battle mech. Oh, remember when mech fighting was all the rage. The universe, and it's a battle to the death. Like in the, when they made it to the home platforms later in the 90s. An array of armaments and systems. Massive, massive games. But it takes a, a lot of practice to control. What you're saying, Z, is you're pretty crap. Get you next time. You're letting your team down, mate. Yes. After returning to Earth and the decontamination procedures, VGL pilots love to gather around the debriefing monitors and compare so notes on tactics. But I have a more She's got like a gong on her ear. More about the history of the Virtual Geographic League from board member Tim Disney. Most of the history of the Virtual Geographic League remains shrouded in mystery, but we do know a few things. Is that a real uh, dragon skull that behind his head? 1995 by Alexander Graham Bell and Nikola Tesla with the goal of uh, discovering and exploring other universes. Isn't it dangerous? Well, there have been... It's uh, a bit spurious, isn't it, mate? It's not really virtual reality as we know it. Containment Bay, you'll notice, it's a heavily reinforced structure. Uh, that's for a reason. There have been a few episodes of uh, unwanted hitchhikers making the journey back to, to Earth uh, and, and uh, some resulting mayhem. But uh, we've really improved our safety standards, and in fact, we've only lost 11 pilots over the last 20 Sorry, are you saying that mechs have come back through the machines? Is that what you're saying? In fact, I brought you here this uh, operator's manual, and I suggest you pay very close attention to the regulations concerning safety in Chapter 6. Chapter 6. Hey, okay, come on, this is CITV, it's not CBBS. Uh, Tim, that's my mission. I gotta okay, go. good luck, Z. Hey, don't forget, Chapter 6. My next translocation is to Mars. Oh, look, it's the bloke out of Beverly Hills Cop. On the Red Planet, I'll be flying in a dangerous hovercraft race with my fellow adventurers. And it's Dooley. Taking the roles of enslaved ore miners. Oh, this is like watching a, a Mega CD. It's like Sewer Shark on the Mega CD. He sounds like My he's out of Warhammer. Forty thousand. By any means, I can. I can crash into them or find my solid rocket boosters so I can get a speed advantage. Uh-oh, I'm about to crash. No, oh, Z, he didn't even try and slow down. Oh, man. This blew up. Now I'm in third place. The other crafts are being controlled by real players, so every adventure is different. Hey, I did pretty good. This is my pilot log. No, you didn't. It tells me how many points I got, who I collided with, and how many violations I notched up. Oh well, back to reality. Come on, let's see proof of how you did. Yeah, I didn't think so, Z. Off you go on your bike. Believe that, you'll believe anything. There are plans to set up virtual worlds in this country too. Probably next year and probably in London. Did we get any of those? Does anyone know? Based on this board game. And just like when Z played it, the idea is to destroy opponents and capture land. The SNES game, Mech Warrior, is also based on Battletech. Now for this week's news and previews. Another massive scoop for bad influence. This 
is the first televised look outside Japan at the brand new Sonic CD. This amazing disc features mm. seven... For a Japanese cover, that isn't as exciting as what you'd normally expect, is it? ...of a Sonic pinball sub-level. Those heroes in a half shell are back in a beat-em-up game of their own called Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles Tournament Fighters. Yes, it's not called Ninja Turtles over here. Hero Turtles, I'm afraid. Or it was. Because Ninja was too vicious for the British public. Is this? Oh yes, I love those things. Look at that. Plastic case completely surrounds your Game Boy. Uh, it's got stereo speakers, larger buttons, and an amplifier. There are drawers and little compartments. It's <laughs> amazing. Here for headphones and cards. It just throws the portable part of it out of a window. Little mini joystick. You can prolong the life of your Game Boy with the extra backup battery compartments in the bottom, and there's a mains adapter as well. <sighs> are your trainers looking dull and lifeless? Yep. Have they got that? Just got them from the shop look. Well, take it from me, you are seriously uncool, and you need help from the Trainer Care Lab. Here at the Trainer Care Lab, we use the very latest technology to coolify shoe wear. <laughs> right, fellas, while they're fermenting, here's a really cool... Tip. What is that keyboard in the front? Has that got an LCD display? Simply pause the game anywhere, like so, and type in... A B C B A C A B C B A C and you'll be whisked straight to the end of the level like Ah cool spot I think I better check my trainers uh, A few more hours I think yes Poor you could smell it from here Time to find out how the world scrabble champion is getting on against the Amiga So who's winning well, I'm just ahead at the moment, 323 yeah. to 303, and it's my go. But I've got pretty bad letters on my rack at the moment, so uh, it's anyone's game. Look, some good words there. Rabinias, what's that? Vortexes. The highest level, there's 12 different levels, and uh, <laughs> half wishing I'd played on a, lo a lower level. Wainy, tonight. Thanks very much. Andy. It's not just Scrabble that's enjoying the digital treatment. Lots of other family favourites are enjoying a new lease of life as toy companies convert their best sellers to video format, coincidentally just in time for Christmas. This is Monopoly on the PC. media. At glance, it may look about as useful as a chocolate fire guide, but think about it. There are advantages to binning the cardboard in favour of the computer. Uh, there are. Well, for example, you don't have to argue with the computer about who gets to be the top hat, do you? And you don't have to set the entire board up every time. Seven other computerised characters. They've all got their own quirky little personality traits. Some and you can save your game. Some of them are quite thick. And you can I mean, save the game so that you don't have to pack up the exa board. Like exactly. And, and, well, that's it, really. Stop being so negative, Andy. In this particular version of the game, the basic idea uh... is to get rid of all the tiles by matching them up, like that's a pair. Before each game, you have to sort out the tiles and lay them out in different ways. There are loads of different ways to do this, and it takes ages. That is not a problem, however, on the SNES version. Yes! Called Shanghai 2. Look at that. It's a basic pattern. Now, I'm just getting rid of the tiles. This game does translate very well to computer. Tile which has got two bare edges. I think I spent most of my time playing it down the pub. Them with the joypad, and they're disappearing. On one of those, um, you know, machines. Even old favourites like Battleships have been given the full treatment. In this, the CDI version of Battleships... I want one of those monitors. ...by putting actual sea warfare footage in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. There. Oh, that's, that's, going on that's just going to get irritating, isn't it? Having to watch footage every time. Hits a red, misses a white. If you sink all his ships before he sinks all yours, you've won, or vice versa. And apart from that, it's just like the game I played at school. That's what games tried to do in the 90s, didn't they? Put film everywhere, which slowed the gameplay down. But, you know, it was amazing. Recently, the software has began to appeal to anyone who's less than a grandmaster. This is Battle Chess 4000. Oh, I love the Battle Chess. Battlefield with 32 digitised clay models acting as the pieces. Pawns trade blows with castles, and queens bash bishops to bits. And this is the manic national oh, spoon chess. I'd forgotten about this. This has been brought to life from digitised footage of real actors. They have raging animated battles and are pestered by the Grandmaster who sends down. Oh, I need to get hold of a copy of this. Like them. It's more interesting than watching Short and Kasparov. But for all the technical jiggery pokery of the computer games, for me, there's nothing better than actually arguing with Violet about whether she owes me money for the rent on Piccadilly. You do! I do you not! Do. I do! And now for some more games reviews. Alfred Chicken on the Amiga sees our ah. very plucky hero on the trail of the... Another game I've completely forgotten about. Eggs ...and also Alfred's girlfriend. Here's Lisa to unscramble the mess. When you first begin to play this game, it's difficult to control Alfred. 
and to understand the game. But after a while of playing, you begin to master the maneuvers. This is level three, wood. You can tell from the pieces about nails and bits of leaves. I'm now going through a secret entrance into a, into a room where there's a flower. Now, if I collect this telephone, she will give me a special weapon. I like these graphics, very cartoony and I clear. Fire and collect these objects for points. This game is worse than any other platform game I've what? played. It's very difficult. I was not expecting that. This seems like a very basic game compared to some Amiga releases. It might appeal to younger players, but it didn't appeal to me. It appeals to me. I really hate this game. The gameplay is really basic. And the scores for wow. Alpha Chicken, the girls gave it a poultry 2 out of 5. I want to play it. gave it a foul 2 out of 5. Oh, very good, Violet. Very good. Don't star heroes on the Mega Drive. Oh, here we go. One or two players shoot them up. The story goes that an evil villain has stolen four magical crystals and intends to take over the world. Here's the gun-toting lead to the rescue. This is one of the best ever games for the Mega Drive. It's very fast and you don't know what's going to happen next. It is a good game. This is Seven Force. He's the underlevel boss on level two. I'm just presuming that everyone has played this already. But you have to keep defeating. At the beginning of the game, you it's can choose from many of four a game I think which made it, a, it was better when it came out. So you have two. Because at the wow factor of being fast and loads going on, it looked really good. And it's still a really playable game today. It's a definite game to buy, especially if you enjoy action games. And there's the added bonus of having two players. I like this game. It's really good. The graphics are good as well. But it is confusing when there is two of you on the screen. Mm. This is a very good game. If you like shooting games, it's a very good buy. It's a lot better than average. Goodbye. And the scores for Gunstar Heroes. The girls gave an excellent score of four out of five, and the boys agreed. Four out of five from them. I was expecting some fives there. No, Interesting. No, not quite ready yet. <laughs> a lot of people ask me how the head caption system works. Well, basically, I've had all my hair surgically removed and replaced with a very special material I invented called... Rude rope. At a distance, it looks like real hair, but close up, ugh, you can probably see it's made up of hundreds of tiny insects who grab the lovingly prepared captions in their pincers. I'll demonstrate with this cheap for parodies. But you don't stick it to your hair, mate. You stick it. Oh, you have that on. <laughs> Pause the game I'll let you off. anywhere and type it in B B X X A Y A Y up, then left, and you'll get maximum power. Hey! Okay, tiny friends, you can let go now. <laughs> I said you can let go. Ugh. Let go, I said. Ugh. 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 Thankfully, Rudro is not available in the shops. If you want to read the data blast, set your video recorder now. Thank you, Violet. I shall. The question was to win a Neo Geo and a game, and of course a Bad Influence t-shirt. The question was, from which film is this the last scene? The answer is Die Hard 2, and the lucky winner is... Amanda Jane Bradbury from Linton Swaddling Coat in Derbyshire. Well done. Ah, yeah. Swaddling Coat. This competition prize is a CD32 with software. Oh, and of course... Imagine winning that back in 93. You'd be simple. buzzing your absolute nuts off. If you think you know, give us a call on 0891 700 100. Call he looks... He hasn't won it. He looks very unhappy. Mission for whoever pays the phone bill before you call. Lines will stay open until midnight on Monday. Best of luck. Just before we go, the question that's on everyone Swing. Says, is better. The world. I was, I was talking about the machine in the background that said swing on it. I wasn't doing a, a Wayne's World thing at Violet. <laughs> the end, um, I actually pressed across rather than down on my last move. So, so you lost because it was the computer. I'd have won if I'd been playing on a board, but I lost because I pressed the wrong digit into the computer. At any rate, it would have been very close. It was very close. It's a great player. What was your best word? My best word was uh, equinia. Oh, nice. Well done, mate. That's why you're the champion of Scrabble. The X. Well, thanks for playing it for us. Pleasure. It just goes to show that a computer can almost be beaten. And finally, finally, just before we go, tomorrow sees the launch of the game everybody's been waiting for. Wow. Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Wow. Snares. At last, you get to control the bosses. The word is it's really good. A full review next week. Watch this space. Wow. Goodbye, farewell, Looking forward you. to that. Bye-bye. Au revoir. Au revoir. So there we go, that is at the end of another Bad Influence episode. So next uh, next time we've got Street Fighter 2 Turbo on the Sniz. Glorious. Anyway, have a good rest of the day. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening. See you later.